Last week, the air was filled with love. But this week, the air is once again filled with radiation. Now, up until now, it's been impossible to detect just how much radiation is in the air. And detecting it can be tricky. It's colorless, odorless, tasteless. So how do you know exactly how much radiation is out there? Well, thanks to the folks at radiationwatch.org, we have the Pocket Geiger. Now anyone can detect the radiation levels anywhere, anytime they want. The Pocket Geiger includes the Type 5 Geiger counter board, brass plates for beta particle detection, a 9-volt battery holder with on-off switch, a 16-inch TRRS cable, plastic enclosure, and an extra 3.5-millimeter TRRS jack to build into your own project. So, to test out our Pocket Geiger, I've acquired a few materials with known low-level radiation. The first are some Vaseline glass marbles. They look great under UV light, have very low levels of radiation, but they should still read. Second, I have some Fiesta ware from the 50s. Uh, from the 30s through the 60s, they actually used uranium in the glaze. Up to 14% of the glaze by weight was uranium. Um, so don't eat off of those kids. And finally, you can't have a test of a Geiger counter without some uranium ore. So we picked up some of that. Well, let's put them all through the test, see what happens. Okay, so we've got our setup here. We've got our Vaseline glass marbles. Uh, very low level radiation, but we should still get a read. We will do a contact read. Place that right on the marbles. And give it a go. All right. Usually the uh, resting CPM around here is about five, between four and a half and five and three quarters. Um, the reading started at about six. I'm really just too impatient to wait for it to level out at five. But even with that, we should still see, I can already see it going up a little. Um, as you can see there, oh, look at that graphic overlay, huh? Pretty good, huh? So the average person can expect to receive about 360 rem of radiation per year just going through day-to-day -day life. Um, things that will affect it are altitude, uh, whether you fly a lot, x-rays, if you smoke. There's a great website that we've linked below. You can go and you can put in all your personal information, the elevation at which you live, how much you fly, how many x-rays you get, and it'll tell you about how many REM you received. I come in right about 370 or 380, um, a little higher than average, but also I live in a rocky environment at altitude. I fly a fair amount, so it's really not bad, all things considered. Uh, and it's a fun site to just go and take a look at. And you can take the readings from whatever you detect, plug it into that, and it'll tell you about what's going on with you, including how many years you have until that level of radiation will make you sick. So that's always good to know. All right, 35 seconds left, and I can see we're still rising. Uh, the Pocket Geiger came out uh, in Japan right after the Fukushima disaster. Uh, they wanted everyone to have a way to detect the radiation. What they also did is they, they wrote an app that it would take your level of radiation and your position using GPS, and it would map that. So everybody could look at it and say, okay, I'm here, this is my radiation level, it's worse here, it's better here, etc., and just let the hive mind help each other. It was really a great, great thing. And now it's finally available for single board computers, which is also great for us. All right, there we go. So there's our first one. And yep, look at that. We're up at about 13.6. All right, good. Good first test. Come back, Marble. All right, let's move on to our next test. OK, we're back for test number two. This time we'll be using our 1950s Fiesta Ware. Uh, aside from the fact that they were, up, like I said, up to 14% uranium by volume in the glaze they used for it. They also used lead in the glaze as well. Uh, unfortunately, not in a way that it would protect you from the radiation. So it's no wonder that people were dying from eating off of their Fiesta ware. So don't try that at home, kids. All right, let's drop this on here. Uh, start our timer. And start our read and see what happens. Uh, we should probably speed this up a little bit.
All right, so there we go. A reading after two minutes, a whopping 65.5 CPM. So you can see why it's probably not a great idea to eat off of these plates. You can still buy them, and after the 70s, they remanufactured them without the uranium. What's remarkable is, after World War II, they knew what uranium could do, and they went back to glazing plates with them. Ah, society. All right, let's move on to yes, the resistance, or uranium ore. Here it is. Ow! Look, I, I can't see a thing. Hang on, can we? This, this is ridiculous. Hang on. Finally, we have our pièce de résistance, our uranium ore. Now, uranium ore is actually a lot easier to come by than I would have thought. All I had to do was drive to the Twin Pines Mall at 1 a.m. and wait for a blue van to come by. It was really pretty simple. Actually, there are scientific companies that will sell you uranium ore. It's uh, actually fairly common. This is from New Mexico, this sample. Let's, uh, let's hit it with the detector and see what we learn. All right, and we're back with a surprise result. This came in, the uranium came in at 55.4. That's 10 CPM less than the Fiesta Ware. So if you're out in the desert and you have a choice to eat off a of Fiesta Ware or a piece of uranium ore, I'm still not going to say eat off the uranium ore. It's probably dusty, you're going to inhale that stuff, but really just eat off your lap, that's going to be best. So there you have it, there is our pocket Geiger. Have fun with it.